Hey, what is going on guys? Orvis at Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the no farm kleptomancy with spell thief strategy that a lot of pros are abusing right now for patch 9.3, and we're just basically going to break it down, why it's strong, who it works with, and how you can make it work. And for this week in quarterback, guys, we're trying to get Division 1 back, so we did drop down uh, to Division 2 for this week here, but it looks like if we keep going, we, we will be moving back up into Division 1 here. So if you guys have never heard of quarterback before, it's an app that allows you to play challenges so you can play max kills, max assists, best KDA, and if you win these challenges, you get coins, you also get trophies, and with those trophies and coins, you can unlock free skins. So if you go to this tab right here, it shows all the skins that you can buy in the game, you can buy any skin that is available in the store right now. So if we do maintain the most trophies here in Division 2, we will be moving up to Division 1 for next week. And this week here, if you do place in the top 50 in my club and you gain 1,000 trophies, you can get 10k coins. If you get 2,000 trophies, 25k coins. And then also, I will be giving away my own RP prizes to the top 3 members of my club. And then I'll also give away RP cards to 3 random people who just participate in at least one challenge throughout the week. So if getting free skins for just playing League interests you, then there is going to be a link down in the description below so you guys can check out Quarterback and join my club. So if we get into the video now, first off here, we're just going to take a look at how this strategy works. So basically, there's five steps to the strategy. The first one, obviously, take Spell Thieves and take Kleptomancy for your setup. Don't last hit minions until Frostfang quest is complete. You just want to be focusing on harassing, getting your Spell Thieves and your Kleptoprocs until you finish your Frostfang quest. Now, you do want to try to upgrade your Spell Thieves to the Frostfang as soon as possible. You want to sit on this frost fang you don't want to upgrade it into the support item you just want to build whatever that champion you're playing would build normally after you grab your frost fang and then you should just be looking to harass as much as possible in the landing phase to get your klepto procs and get your frost fang procs and then you can go back to csing minions once the quest is complete so now if we take a look at why this strategy works first is that not CSing will generate a bounty on the enemy laner. Because of the new bounty system introduction here for Season 9, if the enemy laner has a CS advantage on you, he's going to generate a bounty. So by doing this, by not farming and by getting your gold from just the Klepto and just the Spell Thieves, you're going to get a really nice bounty on the enemy laner and then you will be able to cash in on that at some point in the game. So now you would think that if you're not CSing in the laning phase that you will just fall behind in gold and you're just gonna fall behind the enemy laner, but this isn't actually the case. By not CSing, as long as you're taking spell thieves and kleptomancy and you're getting the procs in the laning phase, you're gonna actually stay even or ahead of the enemy laner while also getting this bounty generated on the enemy laner, so you're not actually gonna fall behind in the laning phase by using this strategy. And then number three is that because you are playing a ranged top laner into a melee top lane pick, this is where you would want to utilize the strategy. Like if the enemy top laner is also playing a ranged top lane pick, then it's not going to be the best because you're not going to be able to get as much spell thieves and kleptoprox off in the laning phase, but it works really good if you're playing a ranged top laner into a melee champion, especially that doesn't have a gap closer. So any tank pick like a Nasus, a Scion, a Darius, these champions who don't have gap closers are going to allow you to very easily get your procs off in lane. You're also going to be able to deny the enemy laner lots of gold and XP since the only thing you're going to be focusing on is looking to zone them and looking to harass them in the laning phase. So you're not even focused on last hitting minions where they will be. So you can just really take advantage of that and look to poke them out of lane really easily. And then number four is that once Frostfang quest is complete, you can go back to CSing normally because once you do complete the quest, you're no longer, the Frostfang is no longer going to go on cooldown when you do get CS. So you're now going to be able to not only proc your Frostfang and your Klepto and generate gold from that, you're also going to be able to CS and generate gold. So you're just going to get really far ahead of the enemy laner because of this. 
And then because you're not going to be last hitting minions at all during the landing phase, the wave is going to eventually crash into your tower. Now you want to be using the bushes in the landing phase to your advantage to drop minion aggro. So just try to play around the bushes there. Whenever you are harassing, dip into the bushes to drop the minion aggro and eventually the wave will crash into your tower, making the enemy laner just a very easy gank target for your jungler. Now this does work even better if you are duo with your jungler or if your jungler does know how the strategy works because the jungler can come top lane and if you have a big wave stacked up in front of your tower, your jungler can take that farm and just get a really big gold lead for himself in the early game. This does work best if you are duo with your jungler because you're probably going to trust more in him to be able to use the resources that you give him. You do have to keep in mind that you will be sharing XP with your jungler if he does come and he does take the minions from your wave so if you don't trust in your jungler to actually do anything with the resources then it might be best for him just to not come to your lane so that you don't lose out on the xp but if you are doing with your jungler this is a really good strategy and then later on in the game, once you do complete your Frostfang, you can look to swap out your yellow trinket for a blue or a red trinket. Most people do swap out for the red trinket there because you do have your wards from the Frostfang. You're going to get, get three wards from that. You also have your red trinket, so it just allows you really nicely to control vision there in the early to mid game. So if we move on to who this strategy works with now, there's a couple of prerequisites in order for you to be good with this strategy. So number one is that you need to be a ranged top lane pick. You can't use this strategy on a melee top lane pick because you're just not going to be able to consistently get your spell thieves and your klepto procs off in the laning phase. Number two is that you need to have some low cooldown abilities in your kit or you need to have multiple abilities that you can be using to get your spell thieves and your klepto procs off in the laning phase. And then number Number three, you need to be a decently safe top lane pick as well if you're just like really squishy and you just can very easily get all in in the laning phase then you're not going to be as good with this strategy either. So then for the S tier champions with this strategy, you have your Zillion, Karma, Kennen, Lulu, and Vladimir. These champions here are very safe laning top lane picks. They all have some sort of like either escape in their kit or they have some sort of ability that, that they can use to deny the enemy from jumping onto them. So Karma, Kennen, and Zillion all have speed boost. Lulu has a speed boost, also has her polymorph. Vladimir has his pool. So they're just all very safe top lane picks that you can very easily look to proc your klepto and your spell thieves. Some riskier picks that can still work with the strategy include Sona, Teemo. Uh, Sona is a very squishy champion in the early game so you do run the risk of getting all in in the early game if you're up against a more aggressive top lane pick. For the Teemo it's not so much that he is risky in the laning phase like he does have the speed boost with his W so he's a bit safer in lane but he doesn't have as short cooldown abilities as some of these other picks. His Q and his W are on much longer cooldowns in the early game, so you're not going to be able to generate as much gold from your Spell Thieves and your Klepto as some of the other picks. Victor's also another one that can work very well with the strategy with the low cooldown there on his Q. And then for the Orianna pick, Orianna isn't someone that you see a lot in the top lane or you really see ever in the top lane, but Orianna is a pretty safe laning top lane pick. She's got the shield in her kit, she's got the speed boost, her Q is also on a very short cooldown, so you can look to constantly be proccing that Klepto in the laning phase. So the Orianna one there is definitely a very underrated pick with this strategy. And there are probably a few other champions as well, but you do have to remember, does the champion have a low cooldown ability? Does the champion have a relatively safer laning phase? And if they don't have one of those two things, then they're probably a little bit more riskier to play with this strategy. And then for ways that you can look to counter this strategy, you can look to play a ranged top laner yourself against these picks. So if you're playing a ranged top laner, then the enemy is going to have a much harder time looking for klepto procs and looking for spell thieves procs in the laning phase. So they're not going to be able to generate as much gold as if you were playing a melee champion. You can also look to just play a very strong early game top lane pick or a top laner that does have the potential to look for a level two all in on the enemy laner. So someone like a Pantheon, a Yasuo, and a Riven can be pretty good into the strategy. And then number three, you can also just uninstall League until this does end up getting fixed because this strategy is probably one of the most annoying things that you're going to ever play against in League. 
So that is going to be all for this video though, guys. Hopefully this strategy does get fixed here in the next patch or so. I think it's something that you can definitely abuse in this patch right now while it does stay in the game, but I don't think it's something that should stay in the game for too much longer. So I definitely would not rely on it as a strategy for you to look to climb in the coming patches. But with that being said, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in my next video.